an Irish sherry bomb. Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm going to do a review of the Powers 12 year old Irish whiskey. I gotta say, Wow, if you're into Scotch Sherry Bombs and you've never had a Powers 12 year old, you have got to try this whiskey. Much more impressive after I've gotten past the shoulder. As you can see, I'm about halfway through the bottle and I've only had it open for about a week and a couple more days and this puppy could be gone. That alone tells you more about this whiskey than any point score. So um, before I get into this, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the history of uh, Powers and this whiskey. In 1791, the distillery was established by James Power as James Power and Son. In 1822, it became John Power and Son and moved to John's Lane on Thomas Street. From 1823 to 1860, the distillery expanded. In 1961, a coffee still was installed to produce grain spirit for blended whiskeys, vodka, and gin. 1966, following the American Prohibition of 1920 to 1933, the Anglo-Irish trade wars, the rise of competition with Scotch whiskey, John Power and Son joined the only other remaining distillers in the Irish Republic, the Cork Distillers Company, and their Dublin rivals, John Jameson and Son, to form Irish distillers. In 1975, Irish distillers decided to close all their existing distilleries and to consolidate production at New Middleton Distillery alongside their existing Old Middleton Distillery. In 1989, Irish Distillers itself became a subsidiary of Pernod Ricard following a friendly takeover. In 1976, production ceased at Johns Lane Distillery and began anew in Cork with Powers Gold Label and many other Irish whiskies reformulated from single pot stills, whiskies to blends. So the John Powers 12-year-old Irish whiskey was distilled at Middleton Distillery in County Cork. It is a blend of unmalted and malted barley. It has a minimum age of 12 years. It is bottled at 46% alcohol by volume and sells for anywhere between $60 and $70 here in the United States. So when I first did an uncorking of this, I would say the aromas and flavors were actually quite moderate and the unmalted barley was showing itself more than the malted part. So I wasn't really all that impressed. However, um, a couple of glasses later, got past the shoulder. It really, really opened up. In fact, I would say this has one of the most uh, dramatic um, opening up, you know, once you get past the neck pour, than any other whiskey that I've ever had. And it is really, really, really intense. If you like sherry bombs, you like sherry bomb scotches, I think you're gonna like this whiskey as well. So on the nose, it has a lot of classic uh, sherry notes, fig, dates, raisins, these dried black fruit notes. But this also has more intense spice than any other uh, sherry cast aged or finished whiskey that I've ever had. I would say it's like a spiced rub that you would use in, in a barbecue. One in which someone has maybe used a little bit more... Um, maybe a little bit of cayenne, uh, a little bit more extra uh, heavy on the spices and maybe not as much on the brown sugar notes. I do get some vanilla, caramels, a little bit of chocolate. Other than that, I would say it's mostly on the dry fig, date and raisin notes. On the palate, wow. One of the things that's amazing about this is being at 46% alcohol by volume, with this intensity of flavor, I would have expected to be over 50%, you know, maybe 52 to 55% alcohol by, by volume. It doesn't have, say, like the alcohol burn or necessarily the weight of something with higher ABV, but it does have the intensity of flavor, which tells me. You don't always have to go super high ABV, you don't have to have cash strength in order to get those intensity of flavors. It has a nice development, but for the most part, what you get up front in the middle and the finish is pretty much the same. It's just an intensely sherified, if that's a word, a whiskey. So I get the, the dates, the fig, the raisins. I get uh, some brown sugar notes. 
very intense spices. Um, like I said before, like a barbecue rub, a little bit of cayenne pepper, some black pepper, maybe even a little bit of sea salt, and all kinds of those herbs that you use in your rubs. There is some brown sugar notes, maybe a little bit of a molasses, some caramels, chocolate, and it also has a really long finish. As I'm talking right now, I can still taste it. So while the development doesn't change radically from the front to the mid and to the finish, it is intensely flavorful and it has a nice long finish. It also has a little bit of, some people describe it as a, as a Christmas cake or an Italian panna roll. That sort of um, bready note, dark bread note with some uh, dried fruit uh, nuggets in inside of it. Really, really nice whiskey. Um, it also does well on ice. I have, on a Canadian Glencairn or on a rocks glass, had this with two ice cubes and the flavor still maintained. Yeah, and uh, it, did, it, it was still really, really, really enjoyable. I really, really liked it on ice. It, it wasn't like, oh, now I'm just drinking something that's really watered down or become really, really weak. It holds up really, really well. And yet, as I said before, it's only 46% alcohol by volume. So I am impressed with this whiskey. I'm gonna give it a solid 90 points. Now, what would I want to go higher than that? I think what gets it to 90 is the intensity of the flavor, even though it's only at 46%. And the price point, it's 60 to $70. This drinks as well as some other sheriffied whiskeys I've had. Uh, over a hundred dollars. I think that's another factor in there is the quality price ratio. Um, I like the length of the finish. That all those factors get me past just being good to being a great whiskey and get me to 90 points. What to go beyond 90? Uh, more layers of complexity, more development, something different in the front, in the middle, and into the finish. That's what I would want. What other things could you do to get it to, uh, to that point? I would really like to see this in a peated version. That would be awesome, you know? Get over into, say, like something a little bit more um, like a, a Bunahaven um, a Moin, right? Something that has those sort of characteristics. Uh, I'd like to see more Irish whiskeys that are using peat. Uh, right now, you have Connemara and you have Dunneville's blended uh, peated whiskey, Irish peated whiskey. I'd like to see some more peat coming out of Ireland, and I'd really like to see what this would be like with a little bit of smoky and peat in there. I think it would be absolutely spectacular. So, anyway, so uh, if you have enjoyed this video, if you like watching my reviews, uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, I would ask that you please subscribe. And if you're one of my patrons, I want to thank you very much for joining my little group and supporting the channel. All right, until next time, cheers. Cheers.